All right. So today we're going to be talking about the Victoria Cross in today's installment of 10-Minute History Lessons. So the Victoria Cross is the highest award given to members of the British Armed Forces, and it is rewarded for gallantry of the highest order. So um, this is the highest award in the British uh, military award system. So um, no one can take away a VC from you. You can basically go to the gallows wearing uh, your, your VC. So that's pretty interesting, I thought. And um, it was first introduced in 1856 by Queen Victoria to honor acts of valor during the Crimean War. Now, the Crimean War was between Allied forces. It was the Ottoman Empire, the French, and the British against the Russians. And um, before this time, there was no medal to honor the common soldier. There were medals, but they were for officers, and they weren't really, they didn't mean as much. And there was mentions of soldiers, like, on broadcast, but that was, they were mentioned along with basically every other soldier, and there was, um, th there wasn't really something to really honor these, you know, as, if I can steal this, highest or gallantry of the highest order. So, um, before the Samya, there was no medal for the common soldier, so the idea was introduced by a member of parliament, and it was initially rejected by the military because they thought the military structure thought their power lays in their powerful formations and structured formations, so to award individual actions, they felt would be kind of counterproductive. Oh, sorry, I had a little... something fell there, but never mind, it's not important. So um, the military was against this, but they were outgunned by Queen Victoria. And this could be awarded to members of the army, to the navy, of the air force, even to members of Commonwealth countries, because this was obviously during uh, still the colonial era. So, you know, the British Empire was massive. So even members of Commonwealth countries were eligible. And the medal used for the VC is um, struck from a lump of bronze taken from a Chinese-made cannon that was taken from the Russians at the siege of Sebastopol. And this was during the Crimean War. Now, all VCs are made by the same British jeweler. And um, this has been that way since inception. And this uh, jeweler is Hancock's of London. So pretty interesting. So every VC has been made by them. There's enough medal left for about 80 to 85 medals and as far as I understand there are seven or a few that are s already struck or have already been made but uh, still need to be engraved and the interesting thing is a VC has a lot of value as soon as it's engraved and as soon as it's issued rather but before it's issued it's worthless the metal is uh, unstable bronze it's not a good metal at all but um, it really just goes to what it means more than to its actual value of the metal. So just an interesting fact there. And far less and less people have been receiving the VC because obviously in today's form of war warfare with drones and your um, the direct contact is a lot is a lot less um, common. I rec I guess. So initially, the medal the what the military came up had a the inscription for bravery and Victoria apparently dismissed this and said it implies that not all men in war are brave so she said for valor not bravery implying that all men are brave in, who are engaged in warfare so even um, a chief of staff will salute a private if the private is um, has a VC so this isn't really what's the word it isn't required but it is a kind of tradition so most most will honor this tradition and in 1921 the vc was given to the unnamed american soldier and um, the medal of honor which is the american equivalent was given to the unnamed british soldier to um, honor the unknown british soldier and american soldier from the first world war so um yeah, just a few interesting facts. The French had the Legion of Honor way before this, a few, like, 50, 60 years before this. The Netherlands had the Order of Williams, which was very similar to the VC. And most of the VCs have been presented to the recipients by a royal, and um, even Victoria, a vast majority of them were handed down by her personally. 
Now, any winner would obviously rather want their friends back and wouldn't really... Uh, the medal is pretty useless to them. And the general idea, it seems, is most like a characteristic of winners of the VC is that there is humility. They are pretty modest people. They don't like to talk about what happened. And uh, it seems as though they're just basically getting over their experience and uh, having to relive it seems like a common thing that you don't want to. It seems common amongst returning soldiers not to want to uh, talk about their experiences. So I'm going to amend this section at one point on pause and as soon as I get to work, because I need to get to work soon, uh, just add some more about some of the recipients. Here I'll mention a few so long. So just an interesting fact, there was an Irishman, uh, Surgeon General William Manley, who was the only person to have received the VC and the Iron Cross. Now the Iron Cross was the German equivalent of the VC. And Warrant of the Keith Payne, an Australian, he saved 40 men during uh, the Vietnam War and he was leading a, a group of trainees, basically raw recruits when they got um, ambushed by Viet Congs and he ran behind enemy, enemy lines 40 times to, to save 40 uh, of, his, of his subordinates, Subord, subordinates, subordinates, oh, I struggle with that word, sorry about that. And it can even be given to a group such as uh, Q Battery from the Royal Horse Artillery at Koren Spreit during the Second Boer War. So that was being a South African, I find that damn interesting. And now the Lancaster Fusiliers um, also were awarded the Medal of Honor for, uh, not the Medal of Honor, the VC, sorry, <laughs> for an act at W Beach during the landing at Gallipoli. And w there's only one Gurkha to have received the VC and this is Lakiman Gurung VC and he got this in Burma and unfortunately I watched a documentary on the VC and um, at this point this Lakiman Gurung was still alive and he's a small, small humble little guy and he it seems he died in 2010 which is pretty unfortunate and what happened is he was in the the foremost in foremost in his regiment, and uh, three grenades got thrown into his bunker while um, they were being with the start of a attack by Chinese forces. And he had thrown two grenades back when he threw the third one. His arm blew off, and he had to reload his rifle and fire with one arm for the rest of uh, the conflict. And when everything was over, I think there was something like 90, 90 dead um, Chinese soldiers and 31 were in front of his, his little hideout. So, uh, very interesting that. Now, Flying Officer Lloyd Trigg is the only serviceman to have been given the VC um, solely on enemy testimony, and this was from a U-boat captain. And the most medals given in a single action was seven at Rorkers Drift during the Zulu War, so also being a South African, I found that very cool. And the latest winners have been in 1982 during the Falcons War, 2004 during the Iraq War, and 26 and 2012 during the war in Afghanistan. And I'll amend this and put some more information at one point because um, just also worth mentioning at, at the start when the VC was just just created, it was almost Jeremy Clarkson says it very well. He says, uh, drawing your sword to a to a heathen would basically could get you a, uh, a Victoria Cross, but now it's basically impossible to get it. So I'll just stop this now and then I'll add um, just some more of the most notable guys, I think, who won the VC. And unfortunately, it's never been awarded to a woman, unfortunately, but... Um, in that regard, not in the women, but the fact that there are so many, I think you can really talk for an hour about each individual VC recipient, but I'll just do like a short summary on a few of them. But who yeah, that's 10 minute histories on the VC, the Victoria Cross. And um, yeah, it always, no matter what title you have, VC always comes first and no one can ever take that away from you. So I think it's a amazing way to honor, um, like they said, gallantry of the highest order. And it's almost this has to, this selflessness, I think, is what it comes down to. 
uh, for one person to be as selfless to deserve something like that, and most would feel they don't deserve it. Cool, so I'll pause this now and continue with uh, a bit more later on. Um, yeah, so earlier I said I would make another um, clip where I would speak about some of the um, people who actually won the Victoria Cross, and um, upon further thought, I thought it's there's too many and they're so numerous, and each one, there's not a single one that really shines above the rest, so you need to really need to speak about all of them if you're going to speak about one so I just decided not to and also um, I'm at work and they've blocked like our um, internet usage from even like Wikipedia and Google and stuff so I literally can't even go Google it if I wanted to and all the, that previous information I got off a few documentaries I have so I just mentioned the names of some of the ones they mentioned in the documentary, but um, yeah, very interesting if you want to read up on some of the other people who won the, uh, the, BC, the BC, because it's really uh, very definitely worth the read. Yeah, so I won't be covering that. Sorry about that. Cool. So catch up again tomorrow.